Hey, Brad. Things kind of back to normal after getting back home. Obviously, early arrival on Thursday, but kind of gotten back on a normal. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's always tough going east coast to west, uh, you know, and spending a couple of days on the road. But uh, these were good days for us. You know, we've uh, had some good performances and, and uh, a great result in Toronto. But uh, for the most part, a decent game against LAFC. And these are things we take back with us, look at the positives and move on. So, yeah, um, I think uh, we'll have to see tomorrow, you know, who's up for it and, and how we turn guys around. But, uh, you know, we have a bunch of guys now that have earned more minutes and, and now posing more questions, which is always great. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Miami in an interesting situation. Uh, were, are you happy or sad that you didn't have to game plan for, for Messi? Yeah, I, I mean, bit of both, right? I mean, what an occasion would have been. Um, but again, it's a chance for three points. Um, and we, we don't want to get phased by what's happening on, on the Miami side. We just want to focus on us and, and know that there's three points on the line here and three points for us to, to go into this little break, um, you know, before Leagues Cup uh, with some success. And uh, yeah, we just want to end this uh, stretch uh, this week off in the right way. And did Edu come through? Wednesday night, okay, and good for Saturday? I believe so. Yeah, he did really, you know, he, he did everything in terms of recovering, um, and, and we haven't seen him, you know, since then. So he'll come in and, and uh, yeah, have a chat with Tyler, uh, head of medical, and, and see how, how, where he's at and how he's doing. Um, but I, I foresee him being part of that roster tomorrow. Coach, I know you're not going to ever get content, but will there be a stretch during the All-Star break when you get just a little bit of time where you take a breath and you kind of look at that standings and you see an expansion team in first place and appreciate this for a while? Or are you just that obsessed with next game, we can't be content at all? Yeah, I don't think so. Things move fast. You know, things move real quick in this league and, and you go on a three-run stretch uh, either way and, and uh, it could be a nine-point swing or a zero-point swing. Um, you know, for us, we're just looking to chip away at the block and collect points. Um, where that puts us at match day 34 remains to be seen. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we have a three-day break after, after the Miami game. You know, we let guys go away, don't really want to see them for a couple of days. Um, you know, they can watch the All-Star game, they can enjoy that, and then we get back together. So, um, yeah, there's still work to do um, and, and three points on the line before we get to that point of where we can just uh, reflect. Um, you know, and it's more, not more of a reflection, it's more just recoup. <laughs> recuperate um, and, and, and sort of get the, the body uh, sort of re-engaged again and, and uh, get it ramped up for this last stretch now coming up. So, you know, first uh, with his work to do, have a small relax and then we're off to work again. You know, what has been the most enjoyable part of this thing for you so far? What's really jumped out at you? Just working with the players, working with the players each and every day, willing to grow and there's ups and then downs and, you know, critical chats, uh, beautiful chats, uh, videos, critical videos, great videos that we show and reflect upon. So it's just the journey of what it is to be a pro and it's just the journey of it is to be a coach, uh, coaching young, hungry individuals. So, you know, I sit here, you know, we as a coaching staff, you know, we just, these are moments to remember and there's certain moments in your career whether it's a player or as a coach that they'll stick with you for a very long time and and so far this is a year that's going to be around for the ages last thought um a basketball coach sometimes thinks it's great to have like eight really good players and four guys who can't play so there's really never any debate i get the impression with the depth you have you love all these guys and having to make tough decisions and it can be grueling i imagine but do you like the fact that you got drama every night putting out a lineup card? Yeah, I think it's more grueling, you know, because of our style of play, which is great now in terms of that depth, right? So, I mean, if we had never given guys chances, um, we would never have known. Uh, but we're a, we're a coaching staff who, who embrace challenges and, and give guys chances based on performances, whether it's been in training or in the game. So, you know, uh, stylistically, uh, we know it's difficult sometimes to turn guys around just because of the effort we put into our pressing game and, you know, against the ball game. Um, so if we have guys who are ready to plug in and play, um, all better for our sort of, you know, collective cause here going forward. Bradley, this season you guys already faced some teams uh, that changed coaches, but with Miami, it's a brand new coach outside of the organization. When preparing a game like this, is it more complicated to prepare knowing that there is a new coach? Sure, 100%. I feel, you know, with the last few games, we've played teams that have had bad runs of form. So we've been under pressure to get results. Um, 
And whether it's been through coaching changes, whether it's been through a uh, run of results, um, you know, or whether it's been now through, you know, some, yeah, things happening in Miami that are just great for the league, you know, and, and but again, it poses us problems because new coach, first time out, um, no Messi, but still the hype of Messi, you know, they play with a bunch of homegrowns now at the moment, which, you know, you can never underestimate. We know how much we value young players and how much we see a, a style of play and, and the energy they can bring. So this is one for us not to, you know, think that this is going to be an automatic. Um, yeah, we have to be at our best, uh, at our very pressing best uh, to make sure that uh, we get a result here at City Park tomorrow. And uh, Miami, one of their key players is Joseph Martinez. When you were an assistant with New York Red Bulls, you had some, some battles against him. What can you say about him? Just, he's a gamer, you know, y you might not see him for 75 minutes, 80 minutes, but he needs one chance, one moment, uh, you know, he's incredibly good in the air, um, he can hold up the play really well, he he attracts two defenders if, if he needs to, and then opens up space for others, so, you know, he's, he's a great pro, and he's been great for this league, and, uh, you know, just, uh, he, he's one to be weary of for sure, we have to just take, a ga uh, take the game away from him, and, uh, you know, hopefully take the passion for the game as well, f you know, from him. So these are for sure one of the standouts, but they have a couple of other guys there to be taken notice of too. Yeah. Coach, you've said previously you view the season in blocks of games, and you've also mentioned just a few minutes ago how League's Cup is a break of sorts, w probably from MLS play. Do you view this Miami game as like the end point of the MLS season and then a break, so to speak, or in, in the sense where you can empty your tank for Miami? Or is there still some you need to leave in because of the next week? No, we end the block now against Miami, um, you know, within our sort of blocks of games that we, we track. So, you know, it's by n we have already exceeded what we've wanted mm, out of this stretch, you know. So these are would be bonus points. Um, but bonus points are always welcome, all right? So it doesn't change our mindset going into this game. And, you know, it just makes us more appetizing, you know, knowing that, yes, we went away from home, we lost the three points, but there's just so much more to gain just three days later against, uh, you know, I would say a pretty good Inter Miami team with a lot of hungry young players. So, you know, it's going to be an energetic um, style. It's going to be, you know, they love the possession uh, part of the game. Um, you know, they love the passing uh, part of the game. So these are all ingredients for us. Uh, to be excited about and, and hopefully, you know, gain rewards out of. Those areas of possession, they, they may love them, but they haven't had very much success with them. Do you view the midfield especially as an area of opportunity for your team? Yeah, listen, there's, there's you know, a few ways that we've identified um, to expose them. And, uh, yeah, it's sort of defensively, they can always pose you uh, problems. You know, if you give too much time and space away and you allow the combinations to get, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve passes, then it becomes an issue because now you're just running side to side or recovering and getting back in the game. So, you know, we want to identify triggers and make sure we're ready to pounce and, you know, uh, hopefully in the transition game that we can make things quick. There have been a few occasions during the season, and correlation is not causation, but where right after you've made subs that mis mistakes have happened, goals have been scored. Have you seen anything, or is it just timing? Yeah, I mean, listen, we, we knew JB you know, wouldn't be able to survive the whole game. Um, you know, could we have put the player at risk or harm to try and squeeze something out there? You know, I mean, we always think about the player first um, and, and the health of the player. We wouldn't want to run into any problems because I thought JB did a great job, you know, and uh, yeah, everyone comes in. You know, we think a simple one would be to plug in Kyle, uh, who's, who's up to speed, playing great. Um, and then put in Sam uh, and get Edu Leuven minutes, of which I'm sure every City fan welcomes at <laughs> the last, you know, to see Edu Leuven on the ball and to see him contributing in a, in a certain way. So, you know, we might have not gained success in those final 20 minutes, but I think we grew uh, and became more competitive over the longevity of the season. So, you know, sometimes you have to give something to gain something, and, and probably those last 20 minutes was, was exactly that. But you don't see an issue with things being disorganized or whatever in the immediate aftermath of yeah I think changes. sometimes you you know you can talk yourself into it you know we've we've had a bunch of games where we you know we had slow starts after conceding goals and slow starts after half time and I think you could see we've eradicated that and we've kind of dealt with that one right so and, and we've actually scored a goal out of half time too you know the the Toronto game so um, we've got better in certain ways now we just chip away at the next one so you know no one says the season is perfect um, 
and uh, there's always things to do always things for us uh, to reflect on and try and build and get better but uh, hopefully you know it's like building a piece of a puzzle and and all these pieces of the puzzle lead us into the end of the season and hopefully into the post season um, which would have made us made us better now that Leuven's back anything new with Klaus no, I mean, I know you had a picture yesterday, I believe. Um, so we'll evaluate that and see, and then give us um, probably the next press conference we will to tell you more. Mm. Uh, with Tim Parker not playing the other night, was it was his loads already high, or were you at a preemptive resting so he would be fine for I think tomorrow? I think just part of it physical, part of it mental. Um, so just accumulating all those minutes. Um, for us, it was just a moment uh, that we thought that yeah, we could give Tim just a totally, you know, an, an off day um, just to recover um, physically and mentally and be part of the group from a different way, out of different eyes. Um, and then just get him ramped up uh, today and, and ready for tomorrow. I think I asked this question very poorly at the end of the game the other day, but uh, Leuven, Vasilev, blow them all in the game at the same time. You plug Leuven in at the 10, keep Vasilev a little deeper. Did you like what you see from that formation as, as a way to carry that forward? Yeah, I mean, listen, we just wanted to give Leuven the most uh, freedom um, when he came into the 10, um, Indy and, and Jubs in, in the sixes. You know, that's uh, try to mitigate that. And then obviously we concede, and now we start have to playing catch up in, in terms of, uh, you know, a tactical and how we can maybe chase the game and get back in the game. So, um, and then, you know, just with the subs that we had, then we, we were forced to bring Edu just a little bit further underneath in the six. So we know all three of those guys can contribute in different positions. Maybe Jubs not as much, um, you know, uh, but, but definitely Indy and, and Edu can, can play the six or the eight or the 10. So uh, for us, it was just more about getting Edu on the field um, because he's been itching to go for, for a couple of days now. Um, and, and progressively, we thought the 20-minute mark would be good for him. Yeah, I'll be with uh, 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 Tim Parker and uh, Roman at the All-Star game. Um, so I'll be out there uh, for those two or three days and, and then head back. we got preparation for Columbus. Were there any injuries or red flags uh, that you noticed immediately coming out of the, the LAFC game outside of just needing to see how players regen? No, volume outputs were really good. Uh, we had some of our highest sprint distance of the year, which means the guys, you know, uh, total distance wasn't wasn't that crazy, but you know, effort and, and energy was there. And uh, I think through 70, 72 minutes, um, I thought it was a, a good game, you know, amongst the good teams. Um, yeah, we have a bunch to grow and experiences, and out of these moments, we learn. Um, and and if you know that you know you guys asked a question about the Seattle game similarities and and those are moments again you know we we put put Seattle in a tough game then we put LAFC in a real tough game you know if you just have a look at how they celebrate that goal um, against us uh, as an expansion team I think you know these are moments we're like wow you know this is pretty cool against an LAFC team with with world stars and, and world beaters so um, great experiences MLS Cup champions uh, Champions League finalists so you know to be competing against teams like this and, and holding our own it's a great moment for the club Bradley any updates on Joachim Nielsen will he be available for tomorrow um, no um, not not yet Back with that Seattle game and the LAFC games, and yeah, you, you look at that and you say in the last 20 minutes you guys were outscored six nothing in those two games. And is that something to think about, or is it just once you guys fall behind one nothing, you're pushing forward? Or you know, yeah, listen, I mean, I think if you saw the intent of our group after conceding the goal, you could see the energy, the willingness, trying to you know speed up the game, trying to get back in the game. And yeah, again, whether it's one zero or three zero, for me it doesn't reflect any more poorly right so we lose the game we lose the three points but you know we could just shut it out and sit back and be afraid and i don't think there's you know i'm not a coach who plays afraid um and i don't want my players to do that right so if we just hang on by the skin of our teeth and uh, at one zero and you know it sounds more respectable uh one zero but i'd rather go down swinging and and if it turns out three zero you know so be it but you know you could see the intent of the boys always trying to get back in the game after that and that's just the way we play we can't just uh, turn the switch like a uh, lights on lights off you know uh, our style of play is a little bit more different than that and we always we always go for it you can see how many games we've tied on the year you know we, we either win games and or, or lose games and and you can see we've won more games than we've lost all right thank you
Good in front. All right, Tom. So Tim's ready for uh, tonight. You've got him. I taught him. I taught him that two seam. You know, mm -hmm. two seam straight down the middle, all gas, no breaks. Mm -hmm. If he misses, he misses. Yeah. yeah. So you pace off sixty feet. Pace mm -hmm. off sixty feet. We had a mannequin sitting there sixty feet away, mm -hmm. aiming for the bottom half of it. Oh yeah. Um. So yeah. If he, I mean, he has the hopes and dreams of all St. Louis City <laughs> SC staff, players, and I'm hoping fans. So he better throw that thing straight. You know. He's getting some practice in now. I think um, Berkey did it last year for for. Did, did he? Did okay. He did okay. He did okay. John, you probably remember. A little, a little high, but it was, mm -hmm. was it high? Yeah, yeah I know. We're teaching Tim to get it right in that strike zone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're yeah. excited. Yeah. We're excited for that tonight. Yeah. I, you play Miami this week. Wish Messi was here. Would it be more fun if uh, you know Messi was on the field? Yeah, of course. Um, he's awesome. I'm pretty sure he's you know the goat in many people's opinions. He's. Uh, Someone that I looked up to, I'm sure everybody else did uh, growing up. But uh, at the end of the day, it's a, it's a game that uh, we want to win, and we're at home, and we have our fans behind us. So, uh, so yeah, we're kind of just looking at it as uh, a game we're going into uh, trying to win. Yeah. And if things had happened differently, you could have been his teammate. Maybe, yeah, maybe. But that didn't happen. I'm here now, and I'm, and I'm, uh, I'm happy where I am. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy where I am, so I'm happy things worked out the way they did. Where do you see this team coming off the two, the Toronto game and then the LAFC game? Mm -hmm. A long trip, lots of travel, a game against LAFC that you hung in there but didn't yeah. do? Where do you see this team at this point in time? Yeah, listen, I, listen, I, uh, I, I don't think it's a, it's a game where we're, we're looking at it and we're losing confidence whatsoever. Uh, I think for 70, whatever, 70, 72 minutes, we were, we were definitely in that game. And... Uh, one really good long ball from C. Fuentes. Uh, you could say it was lucky. Maybe it was lucky. Maybe it, whatever you say. It was. It was a good. It, it was a very good half volley. Um, and yeah, they scored that goal. And kind of once that went in, the kind of floodgates opened, and it was much more difficult for us playing away from home. Uh, and they're a very good team. They are the champions. Um, we didn't expect an easy game. And uh, yeah, they beat us 3-0. I think the scoreline flattered them a little bit. Um, but yeah, but prior to that, we were, we came off three wins. I think two of them were away. Yeah, came off three wins, two away wins, one at home to Colorado. So, uh, yeah, not too high, not too low, but we're going to focus on ourselves and hopefully get a win. Andy, with this game this Saturday and then, of course, the League's Cup break, it's kind of unusual with the typical MLS schedule, but mm -hmm. it's kind of like the end of the first act of your mm -hmm. schedule. Are you all kind of looking at it that way, or is it more just like a continuation of your season with the League's Cup coming up? Uh yeah, I think for us, our mentality was kind of two halves of the season. Uh, and our first half finished, I believe, when there were 17 games over. Um, that was our mentality. So we did our 17-game block, and that was our first half of the season. And we kind of already, we've, we've kind of already flipped the page, and now we're focusing on the second half, um, which includes League's Cup. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how we looked at it, two 17-game periods. Indy, it seems like the midfield is really coming together as far as form, fitness, and health, really. So how do you see the, the combination of Blome, Leuven, mm -hmm. Stroud, yourself, AZ coming into his own, uh, kind of coalescing as you run this back half of the season? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have, uh, I think we have a lot of very good players, like you said, a lot of quality players. Um, and I think it's just up to individually us to prove in training who deserves to kind of play on that certain game day. Um, but yeah. Uh, just to echo myself again, there's we have a lot of quality and a lot of good players in the midfield, um, which hopefully gives the coaches some problems and some headaches. Um, but yeah, I think it's a very good problem to have. Uh, when Bradley was talking, he said that Inter Miami likes to possess and pass the ball a lot. What are you looking forward to uh, facing them? Oh uh, yeah, I mean I think it's no secret we're we're a pressing team. We like to get on the front foot and we like to put teams under pressure and win the ball high up and uh, uh, and kind of be creative and and be exciting to watch. Um, and yeah, Miami liked to play out. I was there for two years, so I, I do know that. Um, so yeah, it's going to be an exciting game for us. It's, we're going to stick to our principles, and if they stick to theirs, we'll see who comes out on top. Indy Miami has been using some of their young guys uh, lately due to Gold Cup and injuries. Uh, Kermashi, mm -hmm. Riz, Allen. Mm -hmm. uh, did you overlap with some of these guys? Yeah, in I Miami? did. Uh, really, really good, uh, respectful. I, I'm saying young. These guys are, what, three years younger than me, I think? Um, they're still in that group. Yeah. I mean, I'm trying to be in that group. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, no, they're, they're very good uh, players who have a lot of quality, um, and we definitely need to be wary of them. 
Um, and maybe sometimes people look at uh, age as, you know, de like a, a detrimental factor, as in they're too young, they don't really know. But these guys have, you know, plenty of games under their belt. I think Ben has started, I think, more than half the games for Miami this season. He's been playing really well. He scored his first goal, I think, last game against D.C., a very good goal. Um, so, yeah, these, th th these guys... Uh, these men, I don't say kids. These men have th they they have quality, so we have to be very wary of them. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's going to be an exciting game here at City Park. And are you excited about playing against your former team? Um, I was more excited in preseason uh, because it was so fresh. But now it's like, you know, I I'll, I'll be very excited and happy to see you know my old teammates and my old friends. But uh, but there's no animosity between me and them. You know, I wish them all the best. As someone who knows the Miami market, having played there, what's, what's it going to be like in Miami when Messi arrives? How, what's it going to do for that? Uh, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be crazy. Um, and he's going to, I mean, I can't even fathom um, how many fans are going to show up. I'm thinking of how we walked to the stadium and kind of all we did. I think, I mean, they're probably going to have to change a couple things because mm -hmm. um, we walked from our training facility to the stadium because they're right next to each other um, and there wasn't really any barriers there's kind of a little bit of security um, but I think when he comes they, they might have to kind of clean that up because there's no way he'll be able to walk even a hundred feet from the facility to the stadium without people bombarding him um, but yeah I think he's gonna bring a, a lot of quality to that team a lot of excitement and uh, yeah I mean I, th I think it's really good for the league so is it is it weird to think of? I mean, you guys are playing as Miami game, mm -hmm. Miami team tomorrow, which is about to go through the biggest mm. change yeah. that a team could possibly, yeah. you know, go through. Yeah. Um, mm. I think we're just focusing on ourselves, which is what we have done the whole season, which I think is the reason behind why we've been successful. Uh, and I and we're going to continue to focus on ourselves and go game by game, and uh, try and be competitive in every game. I think that's what we said. I think. Even in preseason, we set our goals to be competitive in every game. And the way we're doing that is by sticking to our principles. Um, and the same thing's going to happen this weekend, or tomorrow, I should say. Uh, we're going to stick to our principles and hopefully get a result. So you're saying you were able to walk from the training center to the stadium yeah, easily. on game days without any I mean, there was security? I mean, I mean, there was like some fans there that like sometimes would say hi to you. But I just don't think that... Messi, probably the best the best player of all time, in my opinion, mm -hmm. is going to be able to walk 150 feet from the training facility to the stadium without being bombarded by people. There's just no way. Um, I think they signed him, and then within like a couple hours, every single home game had been sold out. And that's like not even accounting for the people who are just going to go just to try and see him, like just to see him in person. Um, so yeah, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be it's going to be interesting, but it's going to be crazy to see how they kind of mm -hmm. do that. Logistically, I mean, is it good to get this game out of the way? As great as it would be to play against Messi, yeah. to like get him yeah. get this team mm -hmm. at this point in time. I don't think it really matters to us that much. Mm -hmm. uh, whether they had Messi or I think they signed Busquets and they signed Jordi Alba as well. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it would matter too much to us, if at all. Uh, maybe we would change tactics up a little bit if we were playing against them. But uh, yeah, we stick to our way. We stick to our principles, and we kind of focus on ourselves. Mm -hmm. And you kind of touched on this earlier, but how do you look at, you guys played at Seattle, mm. and it was a similar to LAFC, you played type, and then you lost 3 nothing. Mm -hmm. you lose 3 nothing at LAFC, mm -hmm. a lot of goals late. Yeah. Do, do you take anything from that when you look at how this team plays against the other elite teams? The yeah. Way? Listen, those were two very good teams who we played away from home, uh, and I think, I think we definitely showed a lot of growth from that Seattle game to the LAFC game. I think we definitely showed a lot of growth. Um, I if I remember correctly, against Seattle in the second half, it was difficult for us to even get get into the other get into their half. Um, whereas against LAFC, I feel like we had dangerous moments in the second half as well. Um, I can remember off a, I think off a corner, Celio's corner, uh, Tomas had a shot blocked uh, inside the 18, and then Johnny had a very good shot, which was saved very well by my good friend John McCartney. Um, which I'm pissed off he saved it, but it was a really good save. Um, so yeah, I think we had chances, and we were definitely in that game, and then. Once that first goal went in, it was very difficult for us. And the second goal, again, kind of killed us off. Uh, the third goal came late, so. Um, 
but yeah, I think I, I I think personally, maybe you guys didn't see it, maybe people don't see it. I think we showed a lot of growth uh, from that three 0 loss to Seattle to the three 0 loss away uh, uh, at home to LAFC. I think we showed a lot of growth as a team. I think we can build on that. Does it just underscore the importance for you guys of scoring the first goal? Mm. When you guys do that, it's a different game. Yeah, I mean, I think this is, could be the narrative for every single team in this league, though. If you score the first goal, you have so much momentum going for you. Um, and yeah, I mean, LAFC are, I mean, they're a good team. And then once they score that first goal at home, they just have so much momentum. And it's so hard to kind of claw your way back into the game, especially when there's only, what, 18 minutes left in the game. Uh, but yeah, for us, I mean, yeah, of course, we love scoring the first goal. Um, I think statistically, it looks good on us when we score the first goal. I think we win the majority of those games or get points the majority of those games. But I, we showed that we can come back as well. I think the first five games of the season, first six games of the season, I think it was, we came from behind, was it? And came back against Austin, came back against Charlotte, and I hit Portland as well. Yeah, so I mean, we're, we're no strangers to coming back from, from behind. But yeah, to kind of going with your point, it does help when we score the first goal. Yes. Getting Leuven back, just a breath of fresh air for everyone. Yeah. To... Yeah. I mean, he's been training for I think a week and a half now. I can say that, right? Um, he's been training for like a week and a half, two weeks now, whatever it is. So yeah, we're 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 very excited to have him back. Everybody knows his quality, um, his leadership he brings on the field. So yeah, pretty pretty uh, excited to have him back. Yeah. Of on a different topic, how come you always wear long sleeves? It's 95 degrees out there, and you wear long sleeves. Yeah, I'm just an animal. No, I'm kidding. Um, I don't know. I just feel like I don't sweat as enough when I when I um, wear a short sleeve or like cutoffs. I feel like I don't sweat enough. You want to sweat more? Yeah, I just, I, I want to just get you know. So when I have like a little you know Snickers at the end of the night or my uh, my sweet tart ropes, mm -hmm. I want to make sure that I can eat it with like a clear conscience. Like I sweat more than everybody else because I wore a long sleeve. It's not fun, like it doesn't feel better. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think I saw on Twitter somewhere, someone said if you wear long sleeve, it makes the heat light, like doesn't feel as good. I, I think that's what I saw on Twitter. Like if you wear long sleeve, uh, it may, means the heat doesn't hurt you as bad. That was a lie. <laughs> it like, it, you definitely feel it a little bit more with the uh, thermal, uh, with the uh, Under Armour on, but I like it. I like it. I, I sweat more. I feel fine in it. I don't feel like lightheaded or anything. It's not like detrimental to me. I just sweat more, which makes me feel better when I have candy at night. Okay. So yeah, that's kind of my point. Do you enjoy Southern California? Yeah, it was beautiful. The weather's awesome. You wake up and it's a little bit chilly and then it gets a little bit hotter and then you have like a nice kind of period within the day, like from like maybe 11 to, I don't know, five, six where it's like hot and then it starts cooling off again at night. Um, so yeah, it's, it, it, it was beautiful weather. The beaches were kind of cold we, we, we had a regen on Sunday I think and the beach was the water was really cold um, and usually I'm on the east coast in the Atlantic Tybee Island shout out Tybee Island great little beach um, the water's warm on the east coast west coast even in the summer that water was cold um, yeah cold water but we but uh, Southern California was a beautiful place yeah really enjoyed it and how are you fitness wise because you played you were one of the four guys that started yeah. both of those mm -hmm. first two games. How do, you, how do you feel right now? I feel great. I feel amazing. Um, yeah, we have a very good, uh, very good support staff that helps me, helps everybody else recover very quickly. Uh, so I feel really good. Yeah. Any any secrets to recovering other than long sleeves? Cherry juice. Cherry juice. Tart cherry juice. Hmm. Um, and a lot of massages. And board games. Board games help the mind relax, you know? Feel good, look good, play good. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so yeah. I was unbeaten this trip on board games. Oh. Is that right, Gatsby? Before we spiral down to the larger <laughs> rabbit what, what, what games were you? We're going to wrap up with Gotta uh, answer the question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what games were you playing? Um, games close to home. I don't want to give our secrets out to winning, you know? I am glad Tom asked about the long sleeves, because if he didn't ask, I was going to. Yeah. <laughs> um, you've mentioned the, the reinforce reinforcements Miami has that you're not going to have to face, but it is expected that Tata Martino is going mm -hmm. to take over as head coach. Yeah. Are you worried at all? Not necessarily worried, but is there ever a thought about the new, new coach bounce, mm -hmm. and has that affected any kind of game planning that you and your teammates have had this week? We, haven't even, we actually haven't gone over game plan yet, so I can't talk about that. I'm, I'm excited, though. 
I mean, I remember watching him when he was with Atlanta, and he had uh, Miguel uh, Almiron, and he had Joseph Martinez, and they were such a good team. They were so fun to watch. They were so dynamic. Um, they were such a fun team to watch. So I'm, I'm excited to see him in person. Um, and, yeah, I mean, it's going to be exciting to see if, you know, like you said, they, they have a, a new coach now, so it's going to be exciting to see if they do have that balance, if they have more energy. Um, yeah, I mean, kind of excited for the challenge, excited to see him. But like I've said, and I'll continue to say, we're going to follow our principles, stick to our way, and if it's their way against our way, we'll see who folds. Yeah. Andy, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys.